I think I won't be creative here, and I'd rather say that it's Project Loom, virtual threads, and maybe structured concurrency. I think this feature could change the world. For me personally, the most wanted feature is pattern matching for Switch, especially in combination with record patterns. Although I've been using it for quite some time, now with Java 21 release, I can use it officially. It's no longer a preview feature. It simplifies the logic a lot. The compiler will warn you if you forget to match a new interface implementation. I highly recommend giving it a try. It's super neat Java feature. I guess the most wanted feature in Java 21, not just by me, but by many other people, is virtual threads, obviously. First, there are some direct benefits. We'll be able to use thread per request model, which we like and are used to. And also we'll be able to write a code that is not blocking, but it looks like a regular synchronous code. However, I think there's more. I think virtual threads might become a cornerstone for many other things. Structured concurrency is the first that comes to my mind, but I know that there are already some frameworks and libraries which started to uh, abandon their reactive APIs because virtual threads are much simpler to maintain, reason about, and debug. And of course, we have to remember that virtual threads are also threads, which means that we should be able to use them in all those places where we're using threads, which also means that forward porting should be really easy. The most important features for me are all around concurrency, namely structured concurrency and scope variables. Those are more improvements of the JVM platforms, the, the, the platform than the language itself, but that's exactly what I'm waiting for. And I hope that's what will change the way we write uh, microservices in the future. And not only in Java, but in all JVM ecosystem. Java can learn from other languages, a lot of stuff, but um, we have to realize that the, um, the attitude of Java has always been to stay behind the other languages, to watch those languages experiment with different features and see what they end up with. So it's on purpose. Not to mention the a huge um, uh, code base, the, the huge legacy code base that Java has to support. Lambda and method references, which surely can be improved, uh, are far superior in other languages like Scala and Kotlin. We really miss the val keyword in Java. Uh, we have var, but val would be better. String templating and basically interpolation, like it's called in other languages, uh, it's now in preview in Java 21, but it was long awaited. Um, at least I was very interested in that. And this structuring would be a nice addition where you could assign a variable to the result of a function and the variable can be already expanded into the fields composing that, that object. I think Java has been making good progress on many fronts. For example, the release cadence. Now let's just try out new stuff every six months, which is a big change from just a few years back when it took ages between releases. It was before Java 9. But there is still room to make things even better. Java is criticized for being a bit verbose with lots of boilerplate code required. One way to tackle this could be by borrowing some more ideas from functional programming, like what Kotlin does to make things even more concise. Sometimes when I when I tried the modern languages like Kotlin, Scala, Go, Ruby, and so on, I was thinking, why don't we have all these features in Java? So we can think that Java can learn to be more modern from other languages to have all these nice features in TextSugar. However, sometimes I feel that it should be opposite. Sometimes I feel that its other languages should learn from Java. Let's take into consideration records. Uh, it took so much time for Java to implement records, but if you read the Java docs and how they're implemented, the JEP and uh, I feel like they're very solid and they like using records even more than, for example, case classes in Scala or data classes in Kotlin. And uh, I think this is something that a lot of languages lack. However, I still feel that to develop one nice feature, it takes so much time to Java to um, architecture it, to provide it, to write it, to decide how we should go. And 
I would be really happy if this process would be a little bit faster. Definitely Java can get and does get a lot of inspiration from other languages. As in, uh, I like Scala, there is nothing to hide here. So the more from a Scala collections framework uh, we'll get into Java, the happier I'll be. And if I could stop having to do final var and have a val instead, that would really be awesome. Uh, apart from that, well, look at Scala's pattern matching. It's very convenient and powerful, as in I don't know how much of that magic is uh, Java going to be able to port, but well, the more the merrier. It's a good start, but I'm looking forward to more. I do hope so. I hope it will help to create a new generation of microservices frameworks, so, such that are uh, simple to understand and safer to use compared to the current leading ones. Uh, personally, for instance, observe a project uh, Helidon Nima, basically sponsored by Oracle, which exactly showcases how virtual threads uh, can be used uh, uh, exactly uh, as a base for a project, uh, for, for, for a framework. And I hope this will happen not only for Java, though this, this uh, new ways, but we'll also have it in uh, Scala, Kotlin, and basically all JVM based languages. Java can definitely learn from other languages, and I think that's already happening. Um, for example, the pattern matching that is also part of Java 21 um, is something that has been present in functional languages for a long time. For example, in Scala, we had both pattern matching and uh, data classes, which were part of an earlier Java release for like 10 years. Um, but there's still, of course, more to cover. There are still more features uh, even in Scala that can inspire future features in Java. Definitely. Uh, if uh, you're a library developer, you, you will have a lot of things uh, different for you. If you're uh, passionate about concurrency, it's going to be a whole new world available at your fingertips. Uh, if you're a normal developer, probably not so much. It will happen behind the scenes. Uh, but that's definitely going to unleash new problems and create new uh, performance uh, issues where people do things that just weren't possible before. Obviously, some of the rule of thumbs uh, uh, from the path will no longer hold because, well, if threads become cheap, uh, then you can do a whole lot of things differently. It seems that Project Loom might be a game changer because it will allow us writing uh, systems which A, don't block needlessly, especially for I.O., and B, don't require learning any new concurrency models, any new APIs, and C, with easy debugging. Um, not only that, there are also new things around the corner in Project Loom, like structured concurrency. That will become Java's new async await idiom, it seems, uh, while also simplifying other things like task cancellation. And all this together can make it insanely easy to create um, non-blocking systems without having a PhD in concurrent programming. One JEP that I find particularly interesting, maybe it's even in the in a pre-JEP pre stage, is Project Leiden, which is an umbrella project for improving um, the startup time of the JVM. I think that's one of the core problems of uh, of the JVM right now, especially when comparing to uh, solutions like Wasm, uh, which start up instantly and provide a lot of the benefits uh, that uh, Java was originally thought to bring. I'm looking forward to JEP 4.3.0, which focuses on string templates. Whenever I have to combine strings with variables, a part of me cringes. It's even worse when it comes to multi-line string. The current solutions available are either unsightly, verbose, or prone to mistakes. String templates will be released in Java 21 as a preview feature. I'm looking forward to structured concurrency to be no longer a preview feature and become the final part of the JDK to enable a lot of people to use this feature on their productions. Beside Loom, which everyone awaits, Obviously, there are also other projects and enhancements happening in OpenGDK. The syntax changes from Project Amber are really cool and they help to keep Java in the uh, cool languages to learn gang. But I personally wait for projects Valhalla 
and Panama. Because the performance and intro gains we might get from them are going to be simply insane. Uh, think about this, with the ability to easily and cheaply call C, C++ stuff and with all the other good things that are already there in Java, like uh, memory management, rich ecosystem and so on, Java might shine using native libraries. Some say this isness made Python successful in the AI world, so Java might get successful here as well. Java is a good and not so good language for newcomers. I've spent myself some time working as a trainer, as a bootcamp teacher, and I can say from my experience that some things, some concepts uh, could be easier for newbies. Historically, Java was easy peak for all the programmers who already had some experience with C derived languages. Now it's going to be easier just for everyone. JEP 445, which is in preview in uh, Java 21, focuses exactly on that, on making things easier to start. It allows you to skip class, public, static, uh, string arcs, um, ceremony, concepts which are overwhelming when you're new, totally new to programming. And instead, it allows you to focus on the elementals like data, flow control, subroutines, and so on. So soon, Java will be a better language for newcomers. And we also have to remember that Java's community is nice and welcoming. And that also matters a lot. Java surely is a good language for newcomers. Other languages like HTML and JavaScript might get you a job faster, but if you aim for quality of life in the medium long term, Java is the language for you. I mean, like C++ and C projects feature large legacy code bases. Scala and Clojure, Erlang, other niche languages, it's very hard to find a job with that. And Kotlin is a wonderful language, has too little, let's say, market share, uh, much less than I would I would like it to have. Uh, furthermore, most books to learn stuff, uh, design, architecture, they, are, they feature Java code samples, because even if it's slightly verbose, Java has a very clean syntax that anyone can understand. So it definitely is a good language for the newcomers. That's a pretty tricky question, because on the one hand, as we have a huge amount of literature there, I think we still study Java in the university, and it's pretty like convenient, very and it looks um, pretty similar to all the C languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, and even JavaScript. They all have these similarities. So in terms of syntax, maybe it's a good language. However, sometimes I feel that when we are teaching programming to our kids, uh, we try to choose something simpler. Maybe the problem with Java is that in order to start, in order to write your first program, Hello World, you need to introduce a class, you need to write public static void main, system out print and Hello World. And it's very verbose and people are doing it without even understanding what's going on there. So maybe for like for your very first programming language, I would not recommend Java. However, if you wanna like find your job, if you wanna make programming, as your profession, if this is your passion. So maybe Java is the way to go because you can find um, a lot of examples of appliance of Java in the industry in different applications, in Android applications, in server-side applications, doing high load. And um, yeah, if you are interested in this, then I think Java is the way to go. Well, that really depends. To some extent, Java is a safe choice. There are and there will be plenty of Java projects in the future. On the other hand, we also have tons of new junior Java developers. Uh, but if you know that you can work hard and create some example, interesting projects, uh, create some resume, Java is a safe choice, still safe choice to enter the market. Unfortunately, Java is also a very complex language, complex language right now, uh, not only because of the backward compatibility, legacy projects, etc. Uh, it is expected that the junior Java developer knows tons of tools, 
cloud, database frameworks, and that's a little bit insane. So it might be actually easier sometimes to uh, try some modern languages, which are quite often uh, more fun to use. They show more modern ways to write code. And also sometimes expectations on the market are lower. On the market that is way, way smaller. So definitely that's all on the other hand, a very risky choice. Yeah, it, you have to decide for yourself. I think that null safety in Java would be amazing, considering that null is a billion dollar mistake. And I know it would be challenging or even impossible to do this right now, but if we are talking about wishful thinking, that would be great. It's not really a feature of the language as uh, the community. A lot of people are stuck behind on older versions, and that means that they don't get to benefit from all of the new things that uh, we're discussing here and will be discussed in the years to come because people are still using Java or earlier and there is nothing wrong with that except for well they don't get to benefit which means what we're talking is never gonna hit them or it's going to hit them in 10 years and that's kind of sad but that's not java's fault i would love to see something similar to scala copy method in java records to simplify records updates although i know it might not be an easy feature to add Maybe we could start with something simpler, like name it parameters, and then slowly rise the bar towards flexible record copy slash builder utility. It's an interesting question. I think I never thought about this as I worked work a lot with Kotlin and with Java and these days. And sometimes I feel some syntax sugar that we have in Kotlin and don't have in Java like top level functions or string interpolation or extension functions and sometimes i feel like okay it would be nice to have them in java and uh, on the other hand sometimes when i debug the code i feel like oh thankfully we don't have that in java because when i debug these features in kotlin it costs me a lot of time and nerves so in depends we should understand that every feature had pros and cons and probably some maintainability cost um, so I would rather say that I don't have any preference, but if some nice, le some nice features from Kotlin appear in Java, I would be happy. I think that's it. Thanks. Bye-bye.